Hey everyone, Sepio here, and yeah, I'm at the beach, but I've got some video to edit, so I'm gonna do this voiceover at the beach. So I hope you don't mind, there might be a little bit of beach sounds in the background, but hey, my wife wanted to go to the beach, I had video work to do, and this is what you call killing two birds with one stone. So, hope you don't mind. It's a beautiful day out here, Siesta Key. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sit here. I have a Stella and uh, my iPad, and I'm gonna be doing this voiceover. Anyway, here you go. All right, so way back in January of 2022, which quite frankly, isn't that long ago right now, but you may be watching this in the future, in which case it could be a very, very long time ago. There was a blog post done by Dave at EQT, Equilibrium Tuning, about spark plugs. And that sort of started a uh, crazy conversation and I would dare I say confusion about spark plugs and what people should run or not run. And the gist of the issue was that historically they've been recommending, they being EQT, which most tuners will recommend things like spark plugs and oil and other consumables to their customers based on their experience and particularly their experience with people running their tunes. So EQT has historically offered recommendations on spark plugs, but in January, they sort of changed that recommendation. And the change came from the fact that there was a large number of people complaining about losing the ground straps off of their spark plugs, which could be potentially catastrophic, right? If you lose a piece of metal inside your combustion chamber, uh, it could wreak havoc, and it has for several people. It's not as big of an issue as it seems like it is because people don't go onto the internet to explain to others how great their cars are running with their spark plugs. They only go to complain when something goes wrong. So the ratio of complaints to non-complaints is overwhelmingly skewed into the complaint side just for that reason alone. It's the same with anything. But at any rate, there have been people who have had issues with spark plugs, and I think largely those issues come from people who have bought knockoff plugs, non-genuine spark plugs. These are NGKs primarily that we're, we have been dealing with. Or uh, they did not use a proper method for setting the gap on those, which resulted in weakening of the ground strap, which then resulted in it being more susceptible to breakage in high uh, pressure, high heat situations. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm kind of going down a rabbit hill here, but only for a short moment. So eventually there was a, a blog post that came out that discussed the difference between the projected electrode style spark plug and the non-projected style uh, electrode. And so what ended up having happened was there was this shift from people using the standard projected electrode, which is like the normal style spark plug, and moving to what a lot of people refer to as a race plug or a slant ground plug uh, in a non-projected uh, electrode. So that raised a lot of questions of how do you gap those and should you gap those and yada, yada, yada. So the default from EQT, and maybe this has changed over the last few months, was don't gap them. Like the difference between what EQT recommends of 0 0.024 inches of gap and what they come out of the factory, if they're not already pre-gapped to the right uh, specification for you, uh, is so minimal that most people probably wouldn't notice. But they do recommend 0 0.024 inch for both slant ground, non-projected electrodes, and also uh, the standard projected style ground strap. So yeah, so you can gap them, it's just a little bit more tricky. So what I'm covering in this video is actually my process of checking and adjusting the gap on these spark plugs. So first, how you check the gap on these, if you see here, uh, you're going to put it at the angle of the ground strap. It's gonna fit down in there at that angle. And you're looking for the feeler gauge, which is just able to slip through the gap 
And quite frankly, it'll probably hold on to the feeler gauge. And if it's wiggly, then try the next larger gauge. And if it's not wiggly, then, uh, or you can't get it in there, if you can't get it in there, it's, the feeler gauge is too big, so the gap is smaller than that. So it looks like these came from the factory at .028 inches, and I want them to be at .024, so I need to adjust the gap on this. So what I'm using is this gap tool I got from Precision Raceworks. I really like this one. Uh, we have 14 millimeter spark plugs, so you screw it in there, and then you just turn the top to gently press the ground strap down to the position you want it to be. So the first thing I want to do is find that feeler gauge, .024, and you can see there how much wiggle room there is. And then what I'm gonna do is just very gently, just a little at a time, slowly push that ground strap down. And it doesn't take much at all. And I think people, uh, people that have issues with ground straps tend to make too large of adjustments when they should be just making tiny adjustments. So you saw there just a tiny adjustment and then now I am properly gapped at .024. That is the best way, I think, to gap these. Uh, tapping is a method, it's a real method. A lot of people screw it up, so um, I think this is the best way. If I had to tell people like, what's a good, safe way to gap is to use a tool like this that basically screw presses it down. But you've gotta be super gentle. You've gotta go so slow because it's easy to go too far. And if you go too far, Quite frankly, I think you're screwed, really, on these. I, I have not been very successful in getting a slant ground plug widened without breaking it. it they're just so touchy. Um, and so if it's too big, you can press it down gently to the right diameter. If it's too tight, you're just gonna have to deal with it or get a new spark plug. And these aren't cheap, so I would say just be super careful and if you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it at all. It's better to have it a little bit too wide of a gap than, than bust off your ground strap or have it so close that it causes other issues. If you want it gapped properly, there is a way to do it and I think this is the best and safest way. Just remember, little tiny adjustments. Little bit of pressure, not much at all. Anyway guys, that's it. Thanks for joining me at the beach and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.